I have long watched the people of Earth, and I have witnessed their capacity for greatness. They know that in any draft, there are calms between storms. There are days when their league mates turn against them. But the day will never come when they forsake their fantasy draft and the quest for ultimate glory. Rankings, sleepers, breakouts, values. Together at last, united within the ultimate draft kit. The ultimate draft kit stands ready, waiting, watching, protecting and making your opponents look like stupid, dumb-dumb idiots compared to you and your magnificently hot roster. Will you use it to build your team and win a championship? I do not know, but yes, you probably should. The time for courage and world domination is now at ultimatedraftkit.com. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast for Wednesday, August 9th. Happy to be with you, Mike. The Fantasy Hitman Wright is here. Hello. Jason Moore, present, accounted for. Also, hello. Doing a bit of a head nod as he tends to do. I don't know if you've ever not done a head nod in the intro part of the show. I don't know if you've ever listened to our intro music, because if you don't do a head nod yeah. with that, music banging get pumped then you have no soul then <laughs> you have no soul yeah. i'm andy yes. holloway alex toussaint would say go to sleep and try again <laughs> okay all right little alex toussaint yeah. reference. what's up alex i'm sure he's listening i'm, uh, I'm, I'm so yeah. sure yeah yeah I'm, I'm sure <laughs> you, you, do you ever get on your on your bike and and hope for the shout out Oh, I have. You ever do yes. The, oh, I've tried it several times. Have you ever got He's, a shout he out? Has, he has ignored me every time. <laughs> this would be a uh, Peloton bike yeah, ride. Yeah. yeah. I've, I've, I've done all, pretty much all my milestone rides. I'm like, this is the time. That uh -huh. you're going to get yeah. the shout out? And then you go 20 minutes and you're like, this, he doesn't care. <laughs> <laughs> this ride doesn't matter to it's, him. It's like he doesn't even know I did 400 rides. You know what's depressing to me on the, on the, on the bike is that, like, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, aiming, I'm aiming for like 100 rides here soon. Yeah. And then it's like, I'm hearing the shout outs oh. and they're like 35,000 yeah. uh, 35, rides for uh, Joe yeah. Bob in Nebraska. Yeah, us 100 rides. We, we stand no chance. There's no now. way these people aren't riding eight to 10 times a Two day. Two million rides? <laughs> yeah. Uh, sorry, Mike. No so, shout outs. A little, little Peloton humor. Yeah. Jason's left uh, out. I'm sure all the Peloton people. going over people, your head, Jason? All the Peloton people are really enjoying this bit. <laughs> and everyone I else. I don't think they're a sponsor, right? They, uh, they have, have been a yeah, sponsor. They Historically, they have been a sponsor. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. they didn't pay for this. We'd welcome them back. Um. Yeah. Well, somewhere to aim. But uh, welcome in. We've got the top ten quarterback rankings today. We're going to talk about some deeper quarterback value options for your roster heading into the draft. Um, it's hard. I mean, the the quarterback position is. I find it to be one of the harder positions to go into a draft with a plan and not be disrupted because sometimes you begin to construct that roster and maybe one of the top tier quarterbacks drops to you. And, you know, last year it was very beneficial to have Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, Jalen hurts. Like that was a difference maker every single week. Predictably, uh, you had that advantage traditionally on this show. Like we've been doing it nine years. A lot of the years have been focused on late round quarterback opportunities. You know, Josh Allen was a breakout sixth, seventh round. Lamar Jackson was a breakout. Um, Kyler Murray was a value at one point in time. So, like, even last year, Jalen Hurts was a later round pick that that shot up. Yeah, and and so make no mistake here. Like, if you can do that, that's way better. Like than spending the high draft pick. If you can get the Jalen Hurts uh, later on in the draft. So, but when you're in the draft, what I'm saying is, is it's very difficult to see, you know, the Josh Allen name there, the Patrick Mahomes name, and kind of have it disrupt your game plan. 
it's funny. This show specifically, like the top 10 quarterbacks over the last several years, has been one of my least favorite shows because the quarterbacks I want are the later quarterbacks. I don't want to spend up on these high ones. So it's like we're telling you all about these quarterbacks that are good that you you don't want to draft. But it's different this year. It's very different. These are the guys you need this year with uh you know and and what you're saying Andy is very true. When your plan goes awry, right? Like there's there's a top 6 or 7 people for most most people they they want one of those top 6 or 7 quarterbacks. And as soon as that tier is gone, you go Oh no. <laughs> what do I do? Well, and, I, yeah, you could end up reaching for another player because maybe you only like one or two of the later guys and then you reach for them and make a mistake that way. Right. So we're going to give you the answers. <laughs> yeah, we'll do our best and uh we'll talk through it today. Uh so we got that going on. We got some news to talk about. Quick question. Ultimatedraftkit.com head over there. The UDK primed ready to go. All of our rankings being updated every moment of the day we've been playing paying close attention to camp battles camp reports i mean if you are looking for updated kyle trask baker mayfield type of rankings oh yeah and that battle Locked i mean baker's in. gonna start preseason game one kyle trask gonna start game two it's not really fair game two is a pretty tough matchup i feel like they're setting trask up for failure wait did you is, is this real yeah is this real, is real yeah. real preseason like, con yes. tough preseason matchup for Trask. are you making pre excuses for kyle trask yeah he ah, is. might be <laughs> a tough preseason matchup mm -hmm. whose twos are really <laughs> really good if you can't handle preseason week two yeah, you, you should not be a starter. <laughs> it's I, I believe he's it gonna is, be facing ones all year long. I'm really worried about that. I believe he will be playing against the Jets. Okay, who will probably be playing their starters. I'm just saying that's a tough matchup. Did do you know that you play starters throughout like the year? Yeah, but not every week is an, an audition to win the job. Yes, it is. <laughs> when you're Kyle Trask and Baker Mayfield, <laughs> it is, it's uh, we we have other rankings too. Uh, join the foot.com's the community. That's where you get a bonus weekly episode of the show, premium perks throughout the year, access to the premium discord server where you can get into foot clan leagues. You can, uh, ask questions, trade reviews, um, get that sweet, 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 sweet validation that Ooh. you need when you make a trade. You want people to give you the thumbs up. So you're like, yeah, I won the trade. There are people in there that'll give you a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Yeah. Be uh, careful what you wish for. If you get the thumbs down, you just delete the thread mm -hmm. out of Discord. Mm -hmm. Don't worry. And you said no. My friend did that trade. Yeah. Um, those. Yeah. Yeah. The, I was just getting a review for him. <laughs> Quick question of the day: Look, if you don't draft one of the top ten quarterbacks we're talking about today, which we'll get to shortly here on the countdown, who are you targeting at current average draft position? So let's say you are uh, punting the position. You you just sometimes you you go in with the plan to get a top guy, but then a different running back value drops to you, a wide receiver value. You have to pass if you've got somebody that you love dropping at another position that you play more than one of. So who are you targeting right now? Yeah, so um, if I don't get one of those top guys, what I have found my strategy that I have been going to the most, I, because in today's day and age in fantasy football, you need an elite quarterback. You need someone that is scoring crazy amounts of points that differentiates themselves from your average quarterbacks who at the end of the year will accumulate stats but won't win you weeks. And so I'm taking a shot on Anthony Richardson to be more R than we hope. from the Colts. R rookie, yes, uh, rookie dual Six, threat quarterback. 255. Yeah, he's, he's built he's, in he's the... He's a Greek god. <laughs> he really is. He is the Cam newton player since Cam Newton. Um, a real true if alpha human. If you walk by one of the mannequins for like the Under Armour, at yes. the, at, that it, was actually him. He yeah. was standing there. It's, it's just, he's so big. But because I think he might get off to a really slow start, and I would not prefer to play Anthony Richardson week one. I want to see, see it a little bit. I don't need to start off with losses. Um, I'm, I pair him with Geno Smith. Geno Smith is going really late. Mike, I know you love Geno Smith. I do. He's one of your targets as well. Uh, last year finished as the quarterback five, adds JSN to the team. I, I think he has a chance to be really good. And the fact that you can get – it's funny. I'm getting my backup first in Anthony Richardson and then waiting a couple rounds 
and grabbing my starter in Geno Smith, pairing those two guys together. It's a rare time where I will roster two quarterbacks. And then <clears throat> Geno's schedule to start the season, week one against the Rams, week two against the Lions. You can't get much better matchups for a quarterback than those two specifically. It's worth saying briefly that if Anthony Richardson does hit, like we've talked about, there's a possibility. It will mean a lot for, like, Michael Pittman. Yeah. Like, if, if it's a better-than-expected year, I think Michael Pittman ends up a value. I'll say Tua. I mean, Tua has been my target. Um, I think he has fantasy MVP potential. Um, I did hear – I don't know if we got it in the news. To, Jason, you were talking right before we hit record about Jalen Waddle limping off. But with his full allotment of weapons in Miami, I think Tua proved last year that he has a ceiling that is, you know, uh, you know, he had a six touchdown game against Baltimore. He has a receiver in Tyree Kill that breaks football. And so um, I'm not going to presume injury. And I think Tua in the eighth round, ninth round is very, very interesting. So um, that's kind of my target as a player that has top five potential. All right, and I will jump in, and I'll, I'll say it, it is it, – it's funny that we're, we're talking about, you know, these are guys – if we don't get one of our top ten, these are the players that we're going to fall back on because one of the player uh, one of the players in our top ten is not going in the top ten anywhere near that in ADP because we're going to be talking about four-point passing touchdown scoring. Uh, but I want to talk about Dak Prescott, who has essentially always been – a fantasy force. We're just a couple years removed from, you know, almost 4,500 yards and 37 passing touchdowns last year. Yeah, he he did throw a lot of interceptions, but for fantasy football, he once he came back, right? He broke his thumb week one, and then from hit from his second game back because I'm I'm eliminating the first game back after a broken thumb. So this is weeks eight through 18. Dak was averaging nearly 20 points a game. He was the quarterback six in total scoring. Like He came back, and he was still uh, st still a very solid fantasy starter. And it's looking at the Cowboys. What can the Cowboys actually be? Because we have the chatter of, well, we're going to be a run-heavy team. You sure about that? Because <laughs> you have CeeDee Lamb, a top-five wide receiver, Brandon Cooks, a guy, an absolute burner who doesn't look like he's lost a step, and whenever he has a, a quarterback, Brandon Cooks comes through. Um, and then you have the guy you gave the money to, Michael Gallup, now a year removed from his ACL injury. Who has been in camp uh, apparently having great rapport with Dak the, it, right now. So you have three. Like I think this is a really strong wide receiver room. And then at the running back position, Tony Pollard is going to be the starter. Tony Pollard is undersized. You have Malik Davis. He's undersized. You have Ronald Jones. If he makes the team, he's undersized. As of right now, a feller named Rico Dowdle is in line to be the number two running back because he's actually 215 pounds. If you've never heard that name, I don't blame you because until the uh, unofficial death chart had come out for the Cowboys, he's not someone I had really ever paid attention to due to the fact that in his entire career, spanning back to 2020, he has seven attempts in his entire career because he's he's floated on and off of the team. And maybe this is the year that it all comes together for Rico. That's TBD. But my point being, you're not if Tony Pollard's your main guy, you're not going to be able to run him 20 plus times. He will break down. And you have three great wide receivers. So this team, I think, is going to throw more than. They're letting on in the or than the assumptions, the yes, just based on the the based change. on the based. Look at the team. It's just and and Brandon Cooks was not just a they picked him up. They traded for him. Like they went and got him. All right, let's jump into the news. News and notes from around the league, presented by USAA Insurance. Well, this was a big surprise because we had multiple reports yesterday from official sources that Kareem Hunt simply needed to pass his physical with New Orleans and would sign. Mm -hmm. M. Knight got the script, though. M. Knight got the <laughs> script and threw a little twist in yeah. there. Apparently. A twist. Uh, apparently, <laughs> he was called by the Indianapolis Colts before stepping onto the field with the Saints. Now, are we sure? And was there? offered more money. And so right now, he is visiting the Colts. Both teams 
could use him, the Colts probably more. I mean, Jonathan Taylor, if he's not with the team, he's on the pup, he's got an excused absence, he's dealing with the contract, dealing with the ankle, which the ankle is the same ankle that bothered him all last year. And I will say, the, the videos of Johnny Taylor when he was been at practice and he's just in street clothes, like, I'm not a doctor, but the guy's just, he's not moving around like someone who looks like they're ready to play NFL football. So Zach Moss broke his forearm. Deion Jackson has missed time in camp and was the de facto starter last year. Evan Hull's a rookie. They could use Kareem Hunt. And if Kareem Hunt signs in Indianapolis, oh, man. he could be the starter at least until Zach Moss comes back. Oh, if, if, yeah, if Taylor is missing time. If yes. Zach Moss and Kareem Hunt are there and Jonathan Taylor is not, Kareem Hunt is the starter. I think they'd share the time. Sure. I'm, I'm yeah, not saying he I, would I, be a, a workhorse back, but I, yeah. you know. Well, you know how I feel about Zach Moss. I do. I do know. We've talked about and, it. And Jonathan Taylor yesterday left the training facilities with the Colts. He's he's no longer in Indianapolis. He's going to train on his own. So things just keep getting what? worse and worse. Well, they, I hadn't heard that one. They said it, he has a prolonged excused absence. Yeah. It's which like, just sounds, oh, it sounds like, oh, you, you want money and we're not going to give it to you? There's the door. Oof. Jalen Waddle exited practice Wednesday with an undisclosed injury, headed to the locker room under his own power. So we'll follow I up there. I saw a report just now that uh, I don't I don't know how verifiable this is, but that it was he got the wind knocked out of him. That let's hope that's what it is. And he had to go to the locker room for that well, to get I mean, more wind. A... <laughs> is that where they store it? I, I think he just left early. That okay. was towards the end of camp. Uh, Damian Harris, Damian Harris, Bills running back, sore knee, missing mm. practice. Uh, I mentioned yesterday, goal line work right now is being split between Damian Harris and Latavius Murray. Latavius Murray has been very effective. We viewed the lens of, of these guys being added to the Bills roster as, you know, uh, Damian Harris is more valuable than Murray. The, the Bills don't look at things that way. They look at it as we've got a couple productive backs that are good around the goal line and we're going to use both of them. Um, but Damian Harris has just literally constantly been injured. Yeah. So it's not a great sign. Um, for this roster, Marlon Mack left practice. Arizona Brooks, Cardinal. Brooks, <laughs> Brooks, you got to get Marlon Mack news in here. This is you. Oh yeah. Uh, I will say this: when when Marlon Mack is the backup and then he is injured, there's just nobody there with uh, James Conner, who has been reportedly catching a ton of passes in the eleven on elevens. Um. All right. Any other news, Brooksy, that you've seen coming through the wire? Not yet, sir. Okay. Watch, watch that wire over there. Mm -hmm. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Quarterbacks. All right, we're into the top 10 quarterbacks on today's show. Try to bring you some information that you haven't heard before on these guys. Because obviously, household names when you're talking the top 10 at the quarterback position. But some of the angles, some of the directions that they can go. I mean, last year, you had players like Justin Herbert that were disappointments based on their average draft position. Players like Joe Burrow that outperformed or, or met standards that some people set for them. So, uh, Mike brought up uh, from the top 10 things to remember show earlier in the year. That late round quarterback is changing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we do discuss this statistic every year. 45 different quarterbacks. 45. It was 45. Wow. Had a top 12 performance last year. That is the second most in over a decade. So that's great. Yeah, you can find value on the waiver wire. Problem is, is that you do have to get it right. You have to um, have you know, predicted that outlier week for certain backup quarterbacks on the waiver wire, which we do every year. We, we try to give you the, the stream of the week, the best matchup, the best situation. And I, I think we, we, as a community, we do a good job with that. The difference and the reason why late round quarterback is changing is not so much because we can't find the waiver wire quarterback who can come in and throw two fifty and two and crack that top 12 number. We can find them still. The problem is two fifty and two is just not, good enough when there are quarterbacks that are throwing you know 350 and three and then running another 50 yards on the ground and the, you know the gap yeah. between yeah. the elites and the back half quarterback ones is too wide to overcome right now that's the difference uh you you rewind 
seven years ago, and you just did not have quarterbacks scoring at the top what they are doing right now. It's true, and, and you used to look at it and say, hey, 20, 22 points in our league format from a quarterback, that'll get you by. You know, 20, 22, when your opponent's putting up 37 and a half or 38 because of uh, a top-tier running quarterback, that does make it challenging. You've got to make up for it someplace else. So at number 10, popular breakout candidate. He's a breakout in our UDK. He's sitting at 8 and 9 in Jason and I's rankings and number 10 on our consensus. What are you doing, Michael? <laughs> Trevor Lawrence. This is where he is in four point for me. For Jacksonville, uh, Mike has him at 50. Oh, no, that's 15. Sorry. 15. And I, uh, He's expensive Dak Prescott. That's who he is. Oh, man. Wow. Oh man, Mike. Mike didn't hate Mike. Double Trevor down. <laughs> Lawrence. I did not no. know that. No, I do not hate him at all. Couldn't you look at him as like, like I think Jason and I look at him as maybe like cheap Justin Herbert. Right. And you're exactly. saying expensive mm. Dak Prescott. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. Man. So, so why don't you why don't you make the bear case here? The the bear. It's it's not a bear case in that like Trevor Lawrence is going to fall on his face by any means. I mean, last year he. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, he finished as the quarterback eight, and he has great weapons around him. The, my point is that Trevor Lawrence is, you know, he's more of a pocket passer. He can move a little bit. We had 330 rushing yards as a rookie, 290 this past year, but five rushing touchdowns, that's overperforming, especially for 62 attempts. And I think that the just the, the nature of him being a pocket passer and we're – and you have to project the breakout, which a lot of people are doing. Uh, it just that is driving up his ADP to the point where I'm more nervous that he. What if? We, what if it's exactly the same as last year, which is you know a little bit over four thousand yards, upper twenties in passing touchdowns, and that would I think that's a a very likely outcome for for Trevor Lawrence, and that would be a massive disappointment for what everyone is expecting him to do I right now. Is that true? Is it true that that would be a massive disappointment? His ADP is where he finished. You have him ranked where he finished. Yeah, you're QB a. I mean, I know you're, you're hoping you get better than that. When you draft Trevor Lawrence at, at quarterback eight, um, you are hoping that he takes that leap forward. That he is forty seven hundred and fifty yards, and that he's cracking. 30 plus touchdowns and and really sure. elevating to that next level. So I think you would be disappointed even though you you know it, he won't destroy you if if you draft him at quarterback 8 he finishes at quarterback 8, you're okay. But you're you know you're when you're taking these slightly later quarterbacks like him, um you are trying to find the diamond that wins fantasy leagues trying to where, find the touchdown outlier. Yeah, and but I believe that he can do that. I, I think, you know, I say crack 30. If you s told me he throws 36 touchdowns this year with the addition of Calvin Ridley, with the, the receiving room he has, year two in this system, uh, a year two away from Urban Meyer. <laughs> That's I, true. I, I mean, I, I, I've, I view sky's the limit for Lawrence. Uh, you know, from week nine on last year, he was the quarterback five in fantasy, and that includes a game where he was completely unneeded and and didn't score anything because it was against the Texans and it was like oh I don't need to throw the ball today, so I I I, I do think his upside is tremendous and if he were to crack the top three this year that that won't surprise me. He's definitely in the category of great players that could become superstars this year. Like he's twenty three years old, third season, elite wide receiver potentially being added to the room. Uh, continuity for another year. Um, he's definitely in that category. He's not priced at a great discount. I agree with that. It's, uh, But he's also not being projected right now to be a top five guy either. So um, last year finished at eight, like you said. First half of the year was not like the last half. Nice start to the year. Indianapolis, Kansas City, Houston, Atlanta. So uh, we'll take a quick break and come back with a couple of guys, the only running or the only quarterbacks in our top 10 with an ADP after round six in a moment. All right, we are back with the number nine quarterback, Deshaun Watson of the Cleveland Browns. 
Watson's being drafted two picks behind Trevor Lawrence right now. Uh, I am extremely bullish on Deshaun Watson this year. It's been said on the show. Um, I have him at eight. He's being drafted as the QB 10, Mike at 10, Jason at 13. Um, you know, this has been one of those, like, you know, sometimes we agree, sometimes we disagree, sometimes we strongly disagree. Uh, historically, this offseason has been a strong disagreement, in particular between Jason and myself, with what Deshaun Watson will provide for fantasy managers, as well as whether he can return to form. Uh, I have an expectation that he will. Jason has thus far said that he does not believe he will do that. This was uh, the last time we had seen him before Cleveland, QB 5-5-5. Six games with Cleveland last year, four were unmitigated disasters. Uh, his first four back, the final two, very good fantasy finishes and production uh, in those two games. So, you know, in his as he goes, so will Nick Chubb, Amari Cooper, David Njoku, and uh, potentially Elijah Moore and company. You know, it's it's what you believe about the real Deshaun Watson, the player on the field. He is one of the players I will be watching the most for preseason, assuming he plays in preseason. He does. I think I saw him. He confirmed he will be starting. That is great news because my issue with Deshaun Watson was not just, oh, his results were bad. The film, watching him, he just missed passes. He looked like he was in his head and, and played very poor football. And I think when you're in front of a crowd and you've got all of the mental hurdles that come along with being Voldemort, uh, I, I want to see him perform in preseason and say, like, he looks like his old self or this is more of what we've seen. And until I see it, I just don't I don't want to predict. Maybe, maybe it's just like just anti-bias where I don't want it to to work out be. well and so I project that upon him but I will be watching in preseason because he does have the world where he is the most valuable pick in fantasy this year nobody really wants to draft him he plummets down if he ends up in that top five quarterback where he used to be then all of a sudden you have a late round quarterback value which is as we know a really really valuable thing in fantasy football the if if he bounces back to form I mean the and he's pointing out, yes, correctly, last time we saw him, you know, when he was in Houston, he was the Q, uh, QB5 three straight years in a row. That was 2020. I mean, that will have been three years ago since we've seen Deshaun Watson playing at a truly high level. And, uh, I mean, a part of that is back then he, was, he wasn't running like Lamar Jackson or Josh Allen, but, you know, he constantly racking up at least 400 rushing yards and a a good pile of rushing touchdowns is that still part of his game now that he's you know that far removed from it he'll be turning 28 not saying that it, like he's in the age range where it, it can still be there but it, is that part of how he wants to play the quarterback position and so i just i, I i'm in the middle of of you two guys of i have him ranked at QB10 leaving the margin that could he certainly could bounce back but where he is going in drafts which is it's a bit of a discount for a quarterback who could do be who could be a top five quarterback. I'm still taking my my fantasy bets and placing them on different quarterbacks. In six games last year, he was on the exact same rushing pace he had been on for all of his previous seasons in Houston, which is about 500 yards rushing. I mean, went 551, 413, 444, and then last year he was on pace for about 500. Um, and look. I do think it's a really tough situation for fantasy managers because we've always said this on the show. If you don't want to draft the guy, don't draft the guy. If you've got a personal vendetta against him, if you uh, simply want to draft players you enjoy rooting for, like go do it. I mean, yeah. that's, that's always been the case. It's a hard thing to like, like we're never going to draw that line for you because there's like a lot of players in the, in the NFL with various histories and sure. decisions they've made and, and things that have played out in the court of public opinion. Like, that's not my job is to tell you whether to, whether you should root for him. My job is to tell you what I think he's going to do on the football field, and that's what we're trying to break down. And I genuinely think Deshaun Watson might be the fantasy MVP this year. I mean, the, the but Cleveland you might Browns, not have him on your team because you might not want that. I mean, the, that's fine. The Cleveland Browns are certainly banking on it. They gave him what was it? Bank two, is the right bank word. Bank is the right I word. Mean, they, they gave him two hundred plus million dollars. Like 
The Deshaun Watson. They actually Watson. bought him a bank. They said, <laughs> you now are the owner of this banking system. I mean, that's, that's part of the storyline here. That's part of why I'm very confident in, in Deshaun Watson's performance on the field. He's 27 years old. He, they weren't the only team pulling up the Brinks truck to Deshaun Watson. They were the only one pulling it up with like it was all in the in the actual. Yeah, they're the ones who almost completely destroyed the quarterback. Yeah, market. I mean they guaranteed it all, but there were lots of teams that it was really obvious that yeah, the Falcons. Like, yeah, the Falcons and and other other teams were interested in like it's kind of a a known commodity in in the game, and so unless there is a an aspect like Jason brought up where like. Literally, the mental uh, impact of what has transpired has a on the field impact for the rest of his career. Which I mean, maybe that happens. Um, good camp so far, from what I've read. I don't know if you've seen anything no, different. No, I have. I have been uh, coming around a little bit because of the reports from camp that he has looked really good. That he's connected uh, with these wide receivers. He's got a good connection with Elijah Moore out of the backfield. Uh, camp reports have been positive, so I want to. That's where I say I want to see it in front of a crowd in preseason, and I will adjust my rankings up if uh, if he looks good in the preseason. I guess we missed like a Gringotts joke with the bank situation for oh, Vol for yeah. Voldemort, or maybe oh. we didn't. I oh, mean, that I, comes from Kyle. So. I had no idea what you were talking about, but it's nerd stuff. Yeah, it's nerd stuff. Nerd okay. stuff. Yeah. Please don't bring that up in front of me. Okay, I'm and, too cool. Yeah. No, I get it. And um, did you? Did you get to play any D&D &D this past week? No, we we did some Jackbox, though. Mm. All right. Daniel Jones at number eight. Ooh, what? Yeah. Well, he finished this last is, year as... This is four-point four passing <clears throat> touchdown ranks. That, that is true. He finished last year as the quarterback nine. And do not draft Daniel Jones. <laughs> don't do it. I know he's here. I know he's our quarterback eight. But if I may just interject for a moment, you don't want... Don't you this. ever don't you ever want to like order something weird from the menu? You know yeah. what I mean? You go to a place and you know that you know what they have is really good, but then you're like, what's that? Like with fried octopus? It, yeah, good. Let's, give, let's give it a rip. Let's yeah. give it a rip. Isn't Daniel Jones the weird thing on the menu? Yeah, and then next thing <clears throat> next thing you know, you're eating <laughs> Well, look. Did he, you just he, take I, a bite of something? I had the salmon skin in my mouth, <laughs> which is Daniel Jones. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> Sam salmon skin. That's, that's what he is, ordering the salmon oh, skin yes, off the menu? Absolutely. And and if you haven't had salmon skin, and I have, <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> it's bad. Uh, just like Daniel Jones for so, fantasy. So explain to somebody who would be confused by what you're saying and your number nine ranking of yes. Daniel Jones. So on the course of the season, Daniel Jones has – a very unique ability to score a lot of fantasy points in bunches. He had 700 rushing yards last year, and if you could do that in fantasy, you're going to end up with a ton of fantasy points. He finished last year as the quarterback nine. You go, well, that's fantastic. He has an F. The quarterback nine has an F grade in our consistency. Not like a C where it's like, oh, he was disappointing. Yeah, you don't pass the class with an F. No, only 29% of his games were games you were happy with last year. Now, when those happened, they were awesome. I mean, he win you a week. He can, you know, rip off a 70-yard a touchdown run and, and have a great game. Daniel Jones is a wonderful streamer. Daniel Jones is great in best ball. If you want to take that upside magma game ability that he does have, and you don't have to make the start-sit decisions, and or if... He got off to a nice opening to the schedule. But week one, he Dallas. plays against the Dallas Cowboys. So you're starting him week one. Last year, two games against the Cowboys. He was a quarterback 20 and the quarterback 20. I don't want to start that week one. So That's don't. almost a do not draft then. He is a do not draft. I mean, if you're in a two-quarterback league where you're looking at the lower-tier guys that are going to be your quarterback two, okay, maybe you want that volatility and upside that he has, and, and you have to draft, you know, worse quarterbacks. So Daniel Jones is in the conversation. So maybe we call him streaming Daniel Jones because maybe that's what he is. Yeah, that is what he is. He's a streamer. Daniel Jones is a really good Which streamer. Which is also where you find salmon, salmon skin, <laughs> in the stream. Ah, uh, yes, very yeah. nice. He, he was a lot better fantasy-wise over the second half of the season. He was – I mean, you, you got to remember everything that happened for the New York Giants. This was – uh, this was a brand new coaching staff. You had Brian Dable come in, who was has received a, a a good amount of credit for turning Josh Allen or helping to mold Josh Allen from the really raw quarterback prospect who was bad at football into an elite quarterback, one of the best in the league. So you get the second year of that, 
uh, for Daniel Jones learning in this system. I'm more optimistic on what Daniel Jones could do this year. Darren uh, Waller's going to help. Darren Waller, and that's was the next point of the weapons, the passing weapons for the Giants. It was an absolute disaster last year. Everyone kept getting hurt. You had Sterling Shepard was the de facto number one. He he tears his uh, ACL. You have Wandale Robinson, who was a second round pick, and you were waiting and waiting. Had one game breakout, and then he was out for the year. It just the addition of Darren Waller, I think, is is huge for what Daniel Jones can get done in the passing game. And then if you're still getting five to 600 rushing yards with Daniel Jones with rushing touchdown upside, I think that there's a world where Daniel Jones takes that F and turns it into maybe like a B minus. Mm. I do want to give, like we've made some jokes about the little giants. Right. Because they have a lot of small slot receivers on this roster. However, Darren Waller is humongous. Mm. Isaiah Hodgins. He's the Walrus. Isaiah Hodgins is six four and was a part of the run that Mike is talking about. Yes, who has been lauded in camp. Darius Slayton, he's a bigger it's downfield threat. Jalen six Hyatt, one. six foot. They do have a bunch of guys that can run down the field and make big plays. And Daniel Jones, you know, his connection with Darius Slayton historically, you know, they he pops on certain weeks, like you said. So there, I think it's a streaming consideration. I wouldn't want to draft him and then bench him. Because, oh gosh, i got to yeah. hold him through the Dallas game. Yeah, that part is unfortunate. But um, let's look at the Justins. Let's move on. I Justin, love the Justins this year. Justin Fields, Justin Herbert, coming in at 7-6 and six on our quarterback rankings, being drafted one spot apart in fantasy drafts right now. And um, we've got them ranked right around here. So These, these guys are going to win you your league. These are the two best picks, in my opinion, for 2023. At the quarterback at, position? Yes, at the quarterback position. So you're fully in on Justin Fields. They add DJ Moore to the roster, another year in the system. Dar Darnell Mooney is being added back to the roster yeah. as well. Chase but Claypool might be added to the roster. You know, honestly, I think I think Claypool, like I would never I would never even touch him with a thousand foot pole in fantasy. But having him there does help yes, it does. Justin Fields because we all know what this is going to be. Chase Claypool is going to have like 35 targets this year and and 31 are going to be inside the five yard line <laughs> on, on some sort of like jump ball, screen pass, fade. Um, and he's athletic enough to make a few of those plays. And look, let's not, you know, Cole Komet, big contract. Yeah, Cole I mean, Komo got paid. Uh, sacks and turnovers have been a huge issue for Justin Fields. Uh, more money has been placed on Justin Fields in terms of winning MVP than any other quarterback. Um, he took this many sacks last year. Oh. That's going to yeah. look. You can't take that many sacks and not no, end up. He needs to rip it on an IR. Like you're going to get hurt. You're because he it happened last he year. Did. Remember, he basically like was like. Oh gosh, he's out. And then he'd like limp onto the field like mm -hmm. barely alive and then play another play and then limp back to the huddle. Like they have to protect him. They're trying to do that. They're trying to invest in the offensive line a little bit. They did, yeah. Um so can he take a step forward as a passer? That yes. this is what you you've been talking about. He can. Right now the the camp reports have been back and forth. He'll have a good day, he'll have a bad day. Um and he needs to take that progression forward as a passer in order to really elevate up into the tier of a Jalen Hurts style quarterback, do what Josh Allen did. But because he has that rushing baseline, that that otherworldly baseline, not like, oh, he's got, you know, where he's going to run it's not for 300. Three, it's not from this world. 400. Yeah, it's from another it's, world. It's from other worlds. Um, he, You know, he can rush for 1,000 yards. He can rush for well more than that. When he came 1700, on. 1,700. I, I got to tell you this. Yeah. There's an eight-game stretch in the middle of the season, weeks six through fifteen. He's on pace for one thousand seven hundred and twelve rushing yards. I did. <laughs> yeah. I, I, it's not. It's not a thousand. He said, "I'm gonna do it myself." It's <laughs> almost double that. So yeah. sorry. Go so ahead. So when you have that level of a baseline, you can do things that other people can't. You add DJ Moore, you get Darnell Mooney back, and all of a sudden, if you add passing to his galaxy, you know how, how just. His rushing is out of this galaxy. Oh, oh boy. Gonna keep going. Okay. Um, Got anything else for us there? I, I Neil left, deGrasse. I, I left From last a multiverse. <laughs> I left last season saying I have to remember 
that Justin Fields is like my my guy. That Justin Fields is <laughs> the most important. Welcome pick aboard in 2023. And somehow I've kind of forgotten that we statted these guys out. I was a little disappointed where where with where he landed in my stats. But all that being said, you, it, remember when they made that change to really use him as a mobile quarterback, he was the quarterback three that rest of the way. And that was a long stretch. He was scoring more than Jalen Hurts scored, more than Josh Allen scored during the, that, that point. So the fact that you're not grabbing him in the second round or the third round, um, he he could be the quarterback one on the season and – be someone you draft a little bit later. Now, in order for him to do that, he does have to take that step forward, passing the ball. I am less confident he will do it than I was last year in Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts, I had full confidence he was going to do it. I with Fields, I'm like he he might. And so, but the nice thing is he, he doesn't have to to still be a good pick where he's going. He just sure. has to if you want him to be the number one quarterback overall. Yeah, I mean he's sitting there. Um... 46 overall 44 overall 48 overall on different platforms right now so um i think everybody sees the value there look it's been bad before with justin fields but we had a good long stretch where um the the rushing baseline was enough to give you a guarantee every week and that's what you need so justin herbert the other justin you know last year looked like it was going to be wheels up for him. So, I mean, like he's his own case against himself is mm -hmm. that everything can look really great for a player. And then some injuries and, you know, uh, Brandon Staley, right? He, I mean, I got that name right, right? Yeah, Coach yeah, Staley. Coach Staley. Like, this is a hot seat coach. Like, they don't win this year, he's gone. They don't win the beginning of the year, he could be gone. Um, the kind of public opinion right now out of Los Angeles is just like great roster, great team, bad coach. And so that could be something that holds them back because they should be a winning football team. Uh, they should be competing for a Super Bowl. They added Quentin Johnson, huge help mm -hmm. for Justin Herbert. Keenan Allen? Um, Keenan Allen is a great player that will hit an age cliff. So if you want to find some potential problems, like if Keenan Allen's not, if he gets hurt again, if he's not the guy that he has been historically, that could be a problem. But right now, you know, Justin Herbert has everything he needs, and then you add in Kellen Moore, at offensive coordinator, and and you don't really find flaws there. Now he's a pocket passer, so you could you get into a game and he, and he throws one touchdown and Eckler rushes two in and they win the ball game, but you don't win your fantasy week. Yeah, that can happen. Yeah, the pocket passers are tough, but he did have three hundred rushing yards two years ago, and then last year broke his ribs. And threw the ball, you know, he, he would take the snap and then it's out of his hand. Take the snap out of his hand. I don't know how much of that was the lack of weapons when Mike Williams was injured, when they lost Jalen Guyton, when Keenan wasn't there. And it was just like, and they also had offensive line problems. How much of it was the broken ribs? How much of it was Lombardi's terrible offensive system? Um, but I, I see all of that changing this season the fact that you're going into the year with Mike Williams Keenan Allen and Quentin Johnston uh and Palmer uh, Palmer is good for being a wide receiver three four he isn't the dude that's going to step up but they've got a really nice receiving core add Gerald Everett in the red zone add uh, Parham like this is a super offense and we have to remember how last season started for uh for Herbert I mean he came out First game, he was a top five quarterback. Second game, breaks his ribs, has a hard time, loses Keenan Allen. It wasn't a good was it, season. It was week two that that happened? Yeah, I believe it was uh, in the Kansas City Chiefs game uh, on Thursday night football, if my memory holds up. Yeah, September 16th. So, so um, you know, and so you look at what he did in his career, comes out 31 passing touchdowns as a rookie. That's outrageous. The next year, 38, just goes north. And then last year, injuries to his core, both his receiving core and his core, right, um, has a down year. Only throws twenty five touchdowns. That's not happening this year. Well, he's it, he's awesome. It does show you though that you can you can go out and throw for uh, six hundred ninety nine pass attempts for forty seven hundred yards, and you can still end up the quarterback eleven and and hurt people. Like that is the that it's is touchdowns. The, it's, it's all touchdowns. It's the pocket passer predicament. If you throw, As they say. Yeah, I mean, yes. you, you, you look uh, this last year, 4,700 yards. 
that's absolutely fine. It's just, did he throw 35 or 25 touchdowns? And this year, I think with the receiving core, he's throwing 35-plus touchdowns. So you had Fields, rushing baseline. You have Herbert. They're going back-to-back. -back. Now you have two more quarterbacks, maybe a tier above, also going back-to-back, -back, also with that disparity in uh, what they provide on the field, potentially. Joe Burrow at five and Lamar Jackson at uh, four. So, you know, pocket passer and Joe Burrow, great weapons. Um, throws the ball a ton. Jamar Chase is an elite touchdown scorer. Lamar Jackson, you know the rushing baseline is going to be there. We're wanting him to take a step forward as a passer. He has not had um, a wide receiver room this strong in a while. How strong is it? That is a really fair question to ask. Like, sure. Unfortunately, you can go into the season and say, hey, man, they gave him Odell Beckham and they gave him Zay Flowers and, they gave, and Rashad Bateman is going to be back. But I think it's more fragile than it appears right now. Like, Bateman's still dealing with injury. Thankfully, the latest report, running on the sideline, um, hopefully back soon. But it is pretty fragile. Like, you got a rookie that's a smaller rookie in Zay Flowers. We like him. He's not going to be able to do it alone. If, if Beckham's over the hill and Bateman's hurt, you're thin again at wide receiver, like right away. Yeah, you. I mean, but you also you can't discount. Mark Andrews is the number one. So it's we need for, for Lamar Jackson, we need – one of those wide receivers to hit. I don't need uh, the the full trio to be absolutely top tier wide receivers for for Lamar Jackson to finally bounce back to what he was. But he's been essentially working with you know Mark Andrews and and then the wide receivers out there lately for the for Baltimore's they haven't been able to get it done. If just Zay Flowers and Mark Andrews can get it done with the the changes that I'm projecting for the offense for for uh bringing Todd Monken in then I think Lamar Jackson is going to be in an absolute incredible fantasy pick. He's still going to run a ton. Like that's that's not going to go away when you if you're like, "Oh, well he's just he's going to be throwing more." More throws turns into more scrambles for for, for Lamar Jackson. We we don't want uh we don't want them doing the ground and pound. And I think they're going to completely move away for that. So I'm very very excited for Lamar Jackson and then back to uh Joe Burrow they just they have turned this into Joe Burrow's team it in back in 2021 it's 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 pretty wild that the the ride that the Bengals have gone on with this offense of 2021 it was kind of like they were testing it out of like well we want to be a running team but we also have Joe Burrow and these elite wide receivers let's just kind of dip our toes into the pool and we'll see if it works and then they did a full cannonball into that that water, and they said, "Joe Burrow, this is this is your team." He went from 520 passing attempts in 16 games to over 600 in the same amount, 16 games. So Joe, Joe Burrow, calf withstanding, looks like he is of the pocket passers. He will be actually one of the safe ones. Finished at four last year, busted 18 percent of games. Yeah, he was great. He was phenomenal last year. But I, I, he's probably the quarterback. I want the least at cost. I would love to have Joe Burrow in general, but he's a third round pick right now. And he's a third round pick because the big three are going in the second round. They're, they're, he's pushed up to a level that is above where you were drafting Herbert last year. And Herbert was a disappointment because he didn't happen to throw 35 touchdowns. It's like you're chasing the the big three quarterbacks. I didn't get one. Well, I'll just take Joe Burrow. Exactly. Instead Joe of Burrow's waiting. Good. And, and when you look at the players that are on you know, on on the clock, when you're on the clock and the players around where Joe Burrow's going, those are much more valuable than the players you're replacing when you grab Herbert uh, at the back of the fourth. Yeah, I mean, you're, if you're in the third round and you're taking Joe Burrow, you're passing on Jameer Gibbs. Yeah, you're, you're, you're passing. You're making decisions like that. Would you rather have Gibbs and Herbert? Or would you rather have, uh, where's Herbert going right now? Uh, 410. So, do, or, or do you want Herbert and Dobbins? Or, right. I'm sorry, or Burrow and Dobbins. Like, I'd rather have the Herbert-Gibbs combination there. That's the gamble. Um, you know, Lamar Jackson, it has been... Um, it's been a while. It's been a while. I, I, I remind people, and I don't want people to think I hate Lamar Jackson. I don't. Lamar Jackson is a D in our consistency rankings. He's been 35% of the time in his last 17 played football games. 35% of the time that he gave you a usable metric at quarterback. So um, it is a projection for Todd Monken, 
for the change of pace, like they're they're like snapping the ball with twenty five seconds left on the clock right now in camp. Like they are beautiful. They're moving quick. But it is still a projection. Zay Flowers is a projection. Todd Monkin is a pro a projection. Bateman's health is a what? Yeah. So like I'm just uh, You know what isn't a projection though, Andy? Demarcus Robinson's not very good. <laughs> Devin Duvernay's not that great. The number three target on the team last year was Isaiah Likely. Like they just didn't have any weapons. And so yeah, it's a projection that that o Odell will be okay or that Flowers will be okay or that but they're all better than what they had. Like uh, I, I mean I you think I, back I mean Beckham might not be better than Demarcus Robinson. We don't know that. Beckham had a – did I you would, see the it, – it, He also as an, finished at 15 the year before yeah. with injury too. Yeah, so, the injury. Um, it's, to me, for Lamar Jackson. He's got a longer run of not being a top-10 quarterback yes. by a whole season than Deshaun Watson. Okay? Yeah, that's Deshaun, We're talking about, oh, he's missed all this time and not being a contributor. He's got three straight years of not finishing as a, inside the top-10. That is, that is a very fair uh, – and it's he's exp fact. he's expensive now. Like he's getting. You just made the whole argument about the Herbert situation. Like Lamar Jackson's going directly next to Joe Burrow. So you you are paying for the premium when you could take Herbert Lawrence Fields later. Yeah, I, I lean. I would. I if I'm in a draft ADP wise, I'll probably go with Justin Fields. But the case for Lamar Jackson is the first three weeks of the season when he had Rashad Bateman healthy. He was a quarterback eight, quarterback one, quarterback one. He in that time period in three games he threw ten touchdowns because he they desperately need someone else who is not Mark Andrews to do something for this team. Those th the three weeks were magical. Rashad Bateman gets hurt in that game against Buffalo, and then it's pretty much just a downward spiral uh, from there. So you get I think the baseline is seven hundred plus rushing yards for Lamar Jackson. Of course an outlier season of plus uh, of over a thousand rushing yards. That's certainly possible if they really are speeding up the pace of play. Pace of play is, is cannot be uh, understated. Old, yes. Understated. Cause when you're looking at like if a team is getting, I don't know, eight to 10 more plays than other teams, like over the course of the season, that's a really, that's a big deal. That's 10 plus opportunities compared to other people. So I think that the ceiling is still there. The ADP is, is not my favorite when there's because uh, I'm in on Herbert and Justin Fields with with both of you guys, but I don't think Lamar Jackson is a bad pick at all. I think that this is the year that he does return to being a top five guy. He's going to have every opportunity this year with the offensive system and the fact they're trying to equip him. It's not like Isaiah likely win anywhere. Another weapon in the offense. Three, two, one. Who is it? <laughs> Jalen Hurts at three. Patrick Mahomes at two. Josh Allen. At number one in our rankings, we got the stallion out there anywhere. Oh, excellent! Yeah. Um, yeah, and you can put those three guys in any order you like. I, I don't have any problem if you want to say Patrick Mahomes is the best quarterback on the planet. He should be the number one. Great. If you want to say Josh Allen was before the elbow injury lapping the field and should absolutely be the number one quarterback. Great. Jalen Hurts has the best weapons imaginable is the youngest and still progressing could be better than he's ever been and maybe maybe he does has to do something in the fourth quarter for a couple games let, let me say this though I do believe that Allen and Hurts moderately safer than Patrick Mahomes um, Allen and Hurts have the rushing capability I love love like you you can say what you want about James Cook whether you think he'll be consistent or not in the offense he helps I mean, his pass catching is why he's part of this offense. Yeah, he's a good. He's going to help Josh yes. Allen, Dalton Kincaid. Another report. I mean, he he. It took him like, I don't know, ten practices to drop a pass. Uh, this morning, the report is that he has the full trust of Josh Allen. They're going to run two tight end sets where he's the pass catcher. You've got Diggs and Babe Davis. Mm. So, like, Josh Allen is being equipped, and I think people might be missing that. Like last year, they had to bring back Cole Beasley at a random time of the year. Gabe Davis was not consistent. Um, Dawson Knox was on and off the field due to injury and it's not the talent Dalton Kincaid is. And so um, I, I just think that if you look at the weapons that Buffalo has, they're better. Like, they are better. And then Jalen Hurts, like you said, his weapons are amazing and he's going to run the football like crazy. 
So um, you can't stop what Jalen Hurts does. He's, I just don't see a world where I, – I, I agree with you. Mahomes, even though he's the best, is the riskiest of the three simply because – Touchdown variation. Uh, touchdown variation. Yeah. He doesn't have the rushing baseline. And you are still, you know, when you, he has one weapon. And I know he doesn't need, he could spread the ball around. He's unbelievable. But he has one. If something happened to Kelsey, now you go, okay, can you? Noah Gray, what's up? <laughs> yeah, I mean, can you really still pay off on that value? And he's the most expensive of the three. He's in the beginning of the second round. I mean, you are paying a premium like yeah. you paid seven, eight years ago at the quarterback position before people wised up. And so I ha I, I, I've got like two shares of Patrick Mahomes when I did a Kelsey Mahomes stack, but he is very scary as a price. Yeah, that's that's where I want to turn the conversation to is because I, I think the big three are the big three. I don't care what order you want to draft them in. The question is, are they worth the draft pick? And last year they would have been. But last year was a real outlier of a season when it came to quarterback scoring. So the top three quarterbacks, this is in six-point passing touchdown. That's what my numbers are. The, the, the big three averaged almost 29 points a game. You go down to quarterbacks four through six, that dropped all the way to under 23 points a game. So a massive, massive gap. And then the quarterback seven through 12, that was barely over 20 points. That's the lowest mark going back at least five years. I don't know when it was lower. So the the, the lower-tier quarterbacks were getting just so outproduced by these big three, but then you go back to 2021. The point differential between the big the, the top three finishers and the middle was just two points. It was not six mm -hmm. like it was this past year. You go back to 2020, what's the point gap between the top three and then the middle? About two points. We go back to 2019. About two and a half points. So last year was a an outlier in terms of the big three quarterbacks really produced, but the guys behind them all in massively underproduced. So I'm not sure that going taking one of the big three quarterbacks is going to give you the edge that it looks like. Oh, ahead, sorry. Ahead, no, no, no. I was ahead. letting you finish. Uh, what I do like is that I will get 395 or more fantasy points from Josh Allen. Yeah, there because there's three ninety five, four hundred one, three ninety five. Like at least they're safe. Allen is like at that echelon of, of like automatic. Like if I if yes. I if I ended up with what would that be? That would be like in the first round. Then I'm drafting top of the second. Then I grab Allen at the in the third round, at the top of the third. Is that how that would? Uh, I'm doing a bad job of Josh Allen's where, in the second round right now. Well, the very, very end though, right? Two, the two ten. Yeah. So I'm saying if he slipped into the top of the third, that's where I'd be very comfortable taking him. Yeah. I mean, really, truly, the, I, I believe that these three guys will be great picks, great players, and won't be on the championship winning team in your league. I think the championship team. Okay. In your league is the one who in the second round grabbed Devontae Adams or Derrick Henry yeah. or Josh Jacobs and they paired yeah, them with yeah. the quarterback to hit in in one of the Justins. One of the Justins or 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 even you know, even Lamar. I, I do still see Lamar he costs a lot, but I, I, I think he has the chance to even if they score less than the big three, if it's that two point gap that it historically is the gap that you, between Derrick Henry and who you're grab and J.K. Dobbins is way bigger than that. So I yeah I uh, I tend to bypass the second round quarterbacks even though they're going to be great. And um, we have lots of video profile breakdowns for more quarterbacks in these top ten and the sleepers we talked about. They're all in the Ultimate Draft Kit. It's one of the features of the Ultimate Draft Kit we've had from the early days is a hundred plus player profile videos. We get on here, we even update them, and um, you know, we break down players in two, three, four-minute chunks. So you can go through, maybe it's a roster that you've got a bunch of players that are keepers or you're in a dynasty league and you want to see what our projections are for those players so you know whether to trade them, invest in them, believe in them. Um, we break down over 100 players in the Ultimate Draft Kit. That goes along with all of our sleeper breakout busts, value picks at every position, our yeah, player projections, which, look, today we're going through the top 10. That's based on our projections for, for attempts and completions and uh, total yards and touchdowns like we break that's how our rankings uh, bear out like it doesn't 
we don't get on and say, oh, I'd really want to look this way. So I put this guy here. It's like we stat them out one by one. We lay that out. And then as they fall, they fall. So um, there is a lot of nuance. We're trying to equip you to make a pick that makes sense for your team, not necessarily just blindly follow a cheat sheet because your league scoring format is different. You know the guy that picks after you is a Charger fan, and so he's going to take this player there that, you know, another league, the ADP is going to be different. And, and like the average draft position, we quote sleeper a lot of the times. Sleep, I'm going to tell you right now, sleeper is sharper. The sleeper ADP is sharper than the Yahoo and ESPN ADP. I've looked at the disparities between them. Um, sleeper is faster and sleeper is slightly sharper. So some of the times, you know, a player like Chris Olave is going lower on ESPN than they're, Ooh. than they're going on. I need to make some ESPN drafts <laughs> on sleeper. So we're, we're working on getting you like a, um, more comprehensive ADP report inside the UDK where you can see the changing average draft position for every player in multiple formats. Because if you go and you draft, cause you're an ESPN guy, and your league's on ESPN, like that average draft position is going to look different for your league mates, and they're going to feel that average draft position pressure, and you need to be able to take advantage of that. Don't just go by the sleeper ADP if you're drafting in a Yahoo league or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 100%. And, and those projections that we make, you can customize them to your scoring. So you've got an extra thing here or an extra thing there, and you wonder how that would affect your league. <laughs> you, you can have it exactly what exactly. your league is. Yeah, so that's ultimatedraftkit.com. Tomorrow we have the preseason power up episode it's, it's preseason dreaming time okay yes, we're going to talk is. about position battles things to watch for it's almost football time baby almost. so join us tomorrow and then we're doing a full ppr mock draft on friday bring in the heat you guys are going down talk to you then goodbye Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.